What's going on? It's Coach Williams, and I'm back for another breakdown. So today, we are going to talk Lions 49ers in the NFC Championship game. And normally on this channel, we talk about a lot of scheme, but this time, we're going to highlight toughness, okay? So the first play that we're going to watch here is from the Lions, and we want to zero in on Penne Sewell here. So what they're doing is they're motioning, they're yo-yo motioning this tight end across. He's going to go out here and then come back, and they're going to run this counter scheme. They're going to pull the guard here, and he's going to wrap around. But we want to watch Penny Sewell. So Penny Sewell, he gets his hands on this defensive end, and there's this concept called take two. So he's got to take two guys. So he gets his hands on, down blocks on him, and then he sees the linebacker coming from the edge and pivots off the quickness. Watch the quickness to get off of the original block and take the second guy and then knock him over. And then one of the things that you always want to look at with offensive linemen is do they finish blocks? Is him being on the ground good enough for Penny Sewell? No. He wants to knock him over. All right. And so I know Carl Loftus was the guy that ended up making the tackle here, but this take two concept, he's got two guys that he's got to be able to block. So he has to take two. And I think he does a good enough job. They just don't get the kick out here, and it ends up being not a great situation. But either way, we want to focus on not the scheme, but the toughness. Well, the 49ers, they got their own big beastly monster at tackle. And this guy plays left tackle. think you might know who he is. His name's Trent Williams. And so he's lined up against Lucas Van Ness. Lucas Van Ness was a first-round pick of the uh, Green Bay Packers this year, rookie. And at Iowa, they used to call him Hercules because they said he was a pretty strong dude. Well, Trent Williams is a pretty strong dude. So we're going to watch this play from two angles. We'll talk about the totality of the 49ers play on it afterwards. But we want to zero in on Trent Williams here. So they're running this scheme here. They're running this outside zone scheme, outside lead zone toss. And so... He cuts off Van Ness, and Van Ness has really powerful hands if you watch him. So clearly, Trent Williams has been watching tape, knocks the hands down. Look at the quickness to be able to knock the hands down and throw them over, right? So he understands that Van Ness is a pretty strong dude. He's going to try to get into his body, and he uses his own strength and momentum against him. Great technique here from Trent Williams. And it ends up being a humongous play. For a touchdown. So now let's watch it from the other angle and talk through the actual play here. So if you've, I'm realizing I've never said this on uh, YouTube before, but I believe I've said it on Twitter and TikTok. I used to watch some videos with Alex Gibbs, and Alex Gibbs is the father of the outside zone scheme. He was the offensive coordinator for Kyle Shanahan's dad, Mike Shanahan, when they were at the Broncos. And so I've watched a bunch of videos with him, and one of the things that he always talks about, always talked about back in the day, was on the outside zone scheme, everybody's always worried about the edges and getting to the perimeter. But the two most important people in the play are the center and the running back. And you want to make sure that the center and the running back are on the same line on the running back's third steps, right? On his third step, they should be on a direct line from each other. If the running back is too far ahead or too far behind, the play is not going to be successful. There's a high probability that if they are on the same line, the play is going to look really good. So if we watch this play here, we watch the center and we watch McCaffrey. And let's count the steps here. One, two, three, right? They're on a direct line from each other. And there's an alley that's been created. Look at this alley and look at this space. So he hits the hole pretty hard. And it really becomes a one-on-one -on -one between him and the safety. And in the open field, one-on-one -on -one with McCaffrey, there's not a lot of safeties that are going to be able to make this play. He jukes him out and then jukes out the next guy. You can see Ayuk come in here. We'll talk. This is a little foreshadowing. We'll talk through Ayuk's toughness a little later in this video. But Ayuk comes down here and he blocks Owens. Now, some might call this clip, could be called the clip. 
eh, I don't know. Either way, McCaffrey gets sprung, and it's a touchdown. Well, the Lions like to run a little bit outside zone, too, right? So they like to run this scheme as well, running the exact same scheme, except for the fullback is offset, and they're going to run outside zone here, lead zone. And again, let's watch the steps. Let's look at Gibbs' steps here. Is he on a direct line? One, two, three. Him and the center are on a direct line. And that gives him the ability to cut back into this gap, which he does. And now, I saw people on Twitter talking about Antoine Will Winfield Jr. saying, oh, he got shook out his shoes. Look at how much space there is between them. What is this? Like 14 yards of space that there is between the two of them. And Gibbs is dead on the logo. Okay? He's right on the goalpost. So he's got 53 and a third space, 53 and third yard space. He can go wherever he wants to go. This is the hardest play to make in football for a safety. I'm telling you right now, very confidently, you saw on the last play, right? Uh, McCaffrey didn't have as much space. This is way more space. There's not a safety on the planet that is going to make this play against Jameer Gibbs. Impossible. You're not going to make this play. So, yes, he did juke him, but that's just great blocking. All right, opening up the hole. And then from a, a schematic standpoint, I know that we're not talking scheme here. In part, I this is on purpose that I'm showing all the tight angles because I want to show this is what the offensive and defensive line linemen watch, right? This is the nitty-gritty tough stuff, the end zone angle. But they're in man-to-man -man coverage, and that's what really makes this play here because these guys have to be on their man. They have to be aligned on their man so that when – so when they run this outside zone play, everything is flowing this way, and there's no backside safety over here because it's a three-by-one formation. Good night. Touchdown. All right. So on this next play here, this one we're watching. Uh, we'll talk defensively about scheme. Offense, we're not going to really focus too much on the scheme here. But defensively, they're running this cover one cut. Okay, so what cover one cut means is this guy's got him man-to-man. -man, he's got him man-to-man. -man. Uh, these two are locked in on these two man-to-man. -man. He's locked in on him man-to-man. -man. And then the safety is going to rotate to the middle of the field. And then Owens is going to drop down and be a rat player in the middle of the field. But it's called cover one cut because if this single receiver goes across the field, Kittle here, the corner is going to cut him loose. The safety, Owens, is going to lock onto him and be in man-to-man -man coverage. And now the corner is going to be the new rap player. Okay? So cover one cut. And so what ends up happening? He runs the crosser. So Owens is supposed to take him, but he's got his eyes locked in on Purdy. He's real late getting on top of uh, Kittle here. That gets him wide open. Tons of separation, tons of space. Okay? And then run after catch here physical breaks a tackle okay now let's rewind it a little bit here let's look at jennings up here okay let's look at jennings up at the top of the screen ball's caught these receivers are tough they're physical they love to block people so he gets into this guy and then drives him to the sideline into his own sideline into the gatorade coolers <laughs> That's physical. That's physicality from a receiver here. Okay, so we got the broken tackle from Kittle. That's physicality, toughness. We got a receiver blocking downfield. Most of these, you know, prima donna receivers don't want to block anybody. He's blocking this guy downfield. And then let's watch Ayuk. Ayuk wants to get in here on a block, but then he goes, oh, I'm going to back off because I don't want to clip this guy and get a penalty. But then Quay Walker tries to come in here and tries to, you know, bull rush him. And Quay Walker is the one that ends up falling down because Ayuk is a pretty sturdy, physical, tough dude, right? He's just standing there, has no momentum. Bang! Quay Walker falls down, and then watch Ayuk go up to him. Yeah, I don't know if you're big enough for that, little boy. That's what he's saying in his face, all right? So let's watch the film here from the end zone angle. Cover one cut. Owens should take this guy, take Kittle across the field. He's late, hesitates. Let's watch the little bit of hesitation here. He hesitates, false steps, stops. Broken tackle. Jennings is over here having a conversation with him over at the water cooler. And then Quay Walker wants to come in here and be, a, be tough, right? He wants to be tough with him. 
want to be a tough guy? Yeah, you're not big enough to be a tough guy, boy. That's what Ayuk is saying to him. I love that. I love the physicality of the 49ers and the Lions. This is going to be a slug fest, right? This is going to be a slug face fest. I'm excited to watch this matchup between these two teams and the two toughest teams from the NFC are going to represent their conference in the Super Bowl. This is what football is all about. So that's it for this video, and I will see you in the next one. So as always, you know what it is. It's Coach Williams, Ballhawks. We fly. I'm out. Peace.